Hello, this is Richard. I'm here to talk about an issue that's been bothering me for a while now, and it's about police officers. And in in basically America, I guess that's because that's the only point of reference that I can that I can specify on since I live in America. And uh, and I want to talk about the the corruption and how police officers don't know how to leave their problems at home. And they tend to uh, walk around with their heart in their sleeves. And they tend to use too much uh, emotion in terms of following the technicalities of the law that's under their badge. You know, by following the, the restrict laws that follows under their badge. You know, it just kind of seems like these officers, they, they just don't know how to act. It just seems like anyone can be an officer. The reason why I say that is because these officers, the way they act, the way that they walk around with a badge, the way that they respond to individuals is almost as if a normal person, uh, like it's almost as if like some normal person just put on a, a, a costume, an officer costume and decided to just act a fool and be disrespectful to people for a day. You know, that's that's what an officer looks like. Just like a normal person that puts on an, a suit, the badge on, and just walks around and drives a, a cop car and just kind of randomly, randomly just uh, throws his emotions and verbal conflicts at you and, and just like a normal idiot that just, you know, like it seems like anybody could be an officer. You know, there's a lot of issues that go, or go they don't know how to, to restrain themselves of their own emotions. People become officers because... They want to let out aggression toward others. They want to play out the, the characters on movies. You know, uh, you know, you know, like, you know they're just uh, like kids with guns. They're just really unprofessional. The same with security guards and, and detention centers. You know, I was driving up to go, you know, this is, you know, my, my brother who is in detention center. You know, I would go up and visit him. And there was one time when I went to park my vehicle up in the parking lot, and right in the same parking lot, the security guards parked their cars there too. You know, I you would think they'll have their own specific, unique parking spot because they're security guards, but they park the same damn car in the same parking lot as the normal people that go see their brothers and sisters in jail. But but anyways. You know, just the way that they acted, their mannerisms, they just look like a bunch of people that, they just look like a, a regular guy that worked at Walmart. Or some guy that really got a job at McDonald's and just was just kind of talking to his buddy, you know, that just happened to be a, to arrive at the same time and be like, yeah, bro, I had a party last night, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know everything's going cool. I'm going to get paid next week, so I'm going to go out to, to Denver. You know, like they just, the way they walk and everything, they're just a bunch of fools. Like they don't know how to have a profession. They don't know how to walk with a profession. <clears throat> you know, because their name is under the law. Even though you're a security guard, you're 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 still managing human beings. They act like if it's just a job, but you're managing human beings. That that they are, you know, you are them and they are you, you know. And and the police officers also too. You know, like some of them do have a. A sense of uh, professionalism to them, but they act like if they hate their job, you know. Why do you hate your job? If you hate your job, just quit and get another job, you know. Like they act like they don't like their job. Well, quit and do something else. No one's forcing you to become an officer. And a lot of these officers, they just seem like normal people that just kind of walk around with a badge and just kind of they just let anybody in. Like anybody, I could become an officer. You know, um, um, your friend that works at Walmart could become an officer. You know, anybody could become an officer. And most likely, anyone with any emotional distress that has not been resolved, which most of us do have some emotional distress, can become an officer and use all of that mental, negative, psychological disruption on others to put out their emotions on others and take out their aggression on others. That's why I say that anybody can do it because it's it seems as though our, these cops were just normal people that didn't have any great educational background or didn't have any type of uh, 
you know, didn't have any real discipline, you know, emotional or social discipline to know how to handle people. Because when you, when you become an officer, you're not in a movie. You know, you're not playing a character in a damn movie. You're, you're, you're managing people. So you have, to, you have to abide by that. You have to abide by the reality of your situation. People have different degrees of emotions and distress. You know, if you can't, you know, police officers, let me tell you this. If you can't handle your own family, if you can't handle your own self, if you can't handle your friends, if you can't handle, you know, um, these things in your life, then how are you going to handle individuals that you meet every day on a daily basis? How are you going to handle that? You know, they say that they give them psychological evaluations. Well, I think that the psychological, well, these, these cops, they can lie. Have you ever have you ever heard voices? Um, no. Um, do you see things shadowed or anything like that? No. Anybody can say no. You know anybody can do that. You know and then oh okay okay well he's psychologically healthy so let's just get him a badge and a gun and, and, and a taser and a, and a and a beating stick and just throw him out there and uh, you know I think our, and society will be fine. No, it's not. You know and uh, recently my my brother who gets in trouble a lot told me, because he did something bad, but the thing is, though, is that, like I said, cops, restrain yourself from your own emotion. Don't get attached to the situation. You know, this is not your problem. This is a problem that you have to resolve and situate in a, in a, in a more constructive, uh, more professional manner. You're handling human beings. It's not animals. It's human beings like yourself. Now, they, they, my, my brother said that my brother did something bad to someone. And the cops didn't like it, so they took it out of my brother. You know what they did? They socked him up in the in the in the testicles, or kicked him in the testicles, and told him that he was gonna go to prison if he or go to jail if they ever found out about anything. You know, and that they were gonna make sure that they were gonna get a judge that was gonna uh, put a lot of force and make sure he went to jail. Well, the thing is though is that the cops should have done was allow the law to take care of that issue. To allow the law throughout with all its strength to take care of, to resolve that problem. The cops should not have taken out their own personal view, their own personal dis, uh, disliking of my brother. They should not have added their own emotional attachment to the situation. They should have detached themselves in a personal manner and allowed to file the problem to the law and allow the law to, to um, discipline my brother. They should not have kicked my brother in the testicles or attacked my brother. That's too personal. Even if it hurt or not, the thing is, though, is that that action within itself is unprofessional. Cops do this on a daily basis. I've seen videos of cops punching women out. You know, this was like about a year and a half ago or something like that. You know, and, and, and the thing is, though, is that these cops, they're just normal people that have badges. Normal people like you and I, anybody can be a cop. Anybody. If, if you know, officers think that there is somebody, but they're not because they don't know how to act. They don't know how to follow the, the law. They don't, know how to, they don't know how to be professional. I bet you anything that most of these cops don't even know what the hell they're doing and what they want to do with their lives. They just, wanted, they just wanted to do something to just feel as though they're in control of something because they don't have no control in their own personal lives and they want to rule over society. But the thing is, though, is that how will this problem change? Well, let me, let me just think about that. The problem will change when society itself learns to police itself. When the normal person, the normal Joe, when the normal female, when the normal person knows how to police themselves and not get themselves involved in trouble, when they know how to when they know how to stay out of trouble, when they know how to mature, when society improves, when we eat better, eating is important because eating has nutrients that changes the, um, the, 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 the neurological construct of the brain. When we eat bad things, when we drink and smoke a lot, it changes the neuroplasticity of the brain, causing us to think irrational and feel irrational and to feel uh, a sense of anger toward others that we wouldn't have otherwise, and to think irrational and be irrational in our lives. When we eat right, we become better. 
when we become, when we eat right, we, we become better as a society. We treat ourselves and each other right. When society becomes healthy and better, when we learn how to clean up the streets without law, when we better our edu when when we better our schools, when we clean up the the streets and rebuild the the streets, and we when we rebuild the buildings, when we fix when we fix um our parks, and and when we start eating right, when we start uh being more educated, that's when cops the the need for cops will dissipate almost to zip the cops the need for cops will completely die away it will we will not need them because we need to fix society we can't just keep sweeping them under the rug just like on lisa from the simpsons when uh marge simpson became a police officer lisa told her straight up you know isn't it better to just you know fix our society and fix our neighborhoods instead of um Constantly forcing, putting people in jail for no reason, and constantly putting for law enforcement in the law. You know, it's like, you know, we're, we're putting law enforcement in a broken city. You know, we're putting law, it's like putting food on a broken plate. It's not going to work. You have to fix the plate so that the food can, so that the food can sit on the plate and it won't make a mess. Because with the cops there, they're not going to fix the problem. The cops are enforcement, physical enforcement. Cops, to me, are a last resort. When things are completely out of whack, when things we need, when, when we really need a cop, that's when we need a cop. Just like the pharmaceutical business. We don't need the pharmaceutical business for small sicknesses like, uh, like flus and things like that. We need them when things get really get bad. When we break a goddamn leg, when we're skateboarding, or we crack or get a, a, a fracture in our skull from riding a bicycle and we fall off or something by jumping ramps and stuff. That's when we need cops. When there's no, when, when, when it's a last resort, that's when we need a police officer. We're putting officers out there as though every day is a last resort. There's something wrong. Every day is the last resort. We need cops out there, cops and cops. And it's like the pharmaceutical business. We need medicine, medicine, medicine. Every day is always a last resort with damn health. It's, everything's a last resort. You know, we need to learn to restrain ourselves and better our health. We start fixing our environments, and just like the Simpsons, or we'll go back to Lisa. She said, "You know, why are we, why are we forcing and trying to mask the cracks when we need to get in there and fix the cracks, the cracks of society, heal it up and fix it so that things can get more balanced?" Cops are nothing more than a last resort. Every day of our lives, we're not supposed to have this force, this police force on us, driving around everywhere looking for trouble. They so they do. They look for trouble. They're immature people. They're kids. They don't care about us. They just care about themselves, and they just want to have power. And they're just—it's foolishness. We need to fix society. When we fix society, when society eats better, when society learns to police themselves and grow up, that's when the the need for cops will will go away forever. They'll be in the back storage, you know, the the the, because there'll be less crime. We'll have more respect for each other. We'll be more happier for each other. As a society in our neighborhoods, we won't attack each other. We will not be hostile toward each other. And when we have less hosti hostility toward each other, there will be less calls to the cops to come help you from your domestic problems or from fun some, some fight because someone stole your drugs or someone ripped your house apart and stole your uh, uh, um, uh, appliances and TV set and all that. Things are like that because we're not resolving the problem from the source, which is our health and our fixing up the streets and the buildings of society, educating children more, getting them better education, getting uh, um, fixing each other, loving each other more. But the only way to love each other is to eat right and to fix our society and our neighborhoods and to learn to be more patient with oneself and being patient with oneself will then in turn be patient for others. That's what we need to do. Then we'll start to love each other because it all starts with one person. It starts to spread. You know, envious and anger toward each other will start to dissipate. And the need for policemen will go away forever. That is the final solution to our problems. Lisa Simpson said it on The Simpsons like almost... Back in the mid-90s, I would think, one of the episodes, that's almost like a, 
almost 20 years ago, and yet we're still not following that. There's something wrong, and we need to do something to fix it, because this cannot go on forever. And if the police officers can't change, we'll replace them with robots. But the robots will be hella more, more worse than the police officers because they'll be watching you and they'll be having the cameras on the and all this stuff. But, but we don't even need those robots. Fix society, eat healthy, and cops will go away. Because we don't need humans to be forced onto other humans when there's no need to be forced. Every day is always, every day is always, um, is always panic. We don't realize it, but every day is always panic. There's always cops. There shouldn't be cops out there every day driving around. They're out there because we haven't fixed the problem in our society. We haven't fixed the streets. We haven't fixed our, our, our schools. We haven't educated children correctly. When we, when we fix those things, we'll see less car, cop cars driving around, and the need for them will be less because we will be the ones that will be our own officers policing our own selves be staying out of trouble so it's up to us to stop getting into trouble stop giving cops pride and giving them something to do we don't need to give them entertainment that's what we're doing we're giving them something to do we should start to grow up as a society and start fixing ourselves and start learning to police ourselves and grow up because this thing is going around in circles and that's all i want to say Lisa Simpson from The Simpsons, you are correct, and we need to change. This is Richard Cespedes talking about police officers. You fix society, you fix our streets, get kids more better educated. We start to respect each other and police ourselves better. Become more patient with oneself. Will then in turn be impatient for you. Will be will you will be patient for your brother. Thank you very much. This is Richard Cespedes.